Sometimes, because of the way we name our inputs or request parameters, we end up showing improper validation error messages that just don't look right for the end user. Here's an example. We validate the quantity field, but we are using the abbreviation, not the full quantity word. And while this is acceptable in code, everybody knows what it means, when it comes to displaying the error messages to the end user, we should avoid such abbreviations and use the full version instead. And this gets even worse when we're dealing with parameter names like product ID. While the first error is decent, the second one is a bit weird. As an end user, I would expect something in the lines of the product is no longer available, not the selected product ID is invalid. After all, I haven't selected any product ID or something. Now, to fix this, we can customize the error messages by passing a second array as argument to the validate function, containing keys formed using the name of the parameter, dot, and then the name of the validation rule, which is exists. The value will then be our error message. So here we'll have the product is no longer available. As for the quantity parameter, we can do something like quantity dot min, and then we'll have the quantity must be at least, and to get the minimum expected number, we can use the name of the rule as a placeholder. So we'll do colon min. Refresh, press add to cart, and here they are. The quantity must be at least 10, and the product is no longer available. And of course, we can do the same thing using form request objects. I'll create a new form request using php artisan make request store cart item request. I'll open it. I'll set authorize to true. Let's copy the validation rules. And then to customize the error messages, we'll need to add a new messages function. So we'll do public function messages. And this will have to return the array of customized messages. So I'll go back in the controller, grab these, and have the messages function return them. Finally, we'll need to make sure we use the form request object. So I'll remove this and do store cart item request, refresh, press add to cart, and here it is. And this was tiny tip number three. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.